Hi, this is Mrs. Nearing, and this video is going to be on calculating the amount of heat transferred. So think about the idea of specific heat. Uh, the specific heat of water is 4.2 joules per gram degree Celsius. So what that means is it takes 4.2 joules of energy to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So if we think about implications of that, uh, if it takes 4.2 joules to raise one gram by one degree, how much energy would it take to raise two grams of water by one degree. Well, you're gonna have um, double the mass, you've got double the sample size, so it seems reasonable that it's going to take double the energy. So it takes 8.4 joules. So twice the mass requires twice the energy. Okay, what if you're doing one gram of water by two degrees? So you're gonna have to do double the temperature change. Uh, seems reasonable that that's also gonna take double the energy. All right, so again, this one will take 8.4 joules. Okay, how about this scenario? What if we um, use two grams of water, so we're doubling the mass, and we're changing it by two degrees, so we're also doubling the temperature change. If you had to imagine how much energy that would take, well, I'd probably have to double 4.2 twice, because I've got double the mass being heated, and I'm changing the temperature by double the amount. So if we think about what that would look like mathematically, I'd take 4.2, and I double it, and then I double it again. Okay, and that would give us, what, 16.8 joules. So let's take this concept and turn it into an equation that we can use, okay? So if you notice what we did here, we took this specific heat of water, which was 4.2, and we ended up multiplying it by the mass, because two grams is actually our mass, and by the temperature change. So, you know, let's turn this idea into equations. So the amount of energy that it takes, so, and the energy, we're gonna use the symbol Q for energy, which might seem weird, but Q stands for quantity of heat. Okay, so that's the amount of energy um, times the specific heat, which we use the C, symbol C for specific heat. In the case of water, the specific heat was at 4.2 value. Um, the mass of the sample, we use M for mass, in change in temperature, we use the symbol delta T. So change in temperature down here, it's the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So if your temperature goes up, your change will be positive. Temperature drops, your change will be negative. So this is our equation, which we see, can see matches this math we're doing right here. So specific heat times the mass times the change in temperature gives us the amount of energy. Okay, so now we've got an equation I want to apply it to some scenarios here. So let me rewrite this equation up here. Q equals M times C times delta T. All right, so if I look through this problem, let, let's start to plug in things that we know here. So it looks like, I'll write this down here again, Q to M times C times delta T. Looks like it tells us we have a 135 gram sample of water. So we know a mass, 135 grams. And we know the temperature changes from 21 to 33. So we said delta T is the final temperature, which is 33, minus the initial temperature, 21. So that ends up being 12. Okay, so our change in temperature is 12 degrees Celsius. And we know water has a specific heat of 4.2 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I'm trying to find energy. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug these numbers into our equation. I'm going to multiply 135 times 4.2 times 12, and that's going to give me 6,804 joules of energy. And just so you know, a lot of times our energy values we're going to get here are pretty big, so sometimes we can take these joule numbers and convert them into kilojoules, and a kilojoule is 1,000 joules. So to convert something into a kilojoule, if we wanted to, we would just divide it by a thousand. So this would be 6.804 kilojoules. Okay, but either way would be fine in this case because we didn't specify whether you have to say it in joules or kilojoules, so either way works. All right, let's try another example here. Find the energy release per gram of fuel. This is very similar to what we did in the lab scenario. So again, we've got Q equals M times C time is delta T. What gets trickier here is you'll notice that we have three 
mass values. So when trying to plug a number into the mass, you might wonder which mass do I use? Do I use this one, this one, this one? Do I subtract them? What am I supposed to do here? Well, the trick is to ask yourself, what are you measuring the temperature of? Okay, the thing that you're measuring the temperature of is the thing that you should be using the mass of. So it looks like here I'm measuring the temperature of the water. So this is the temperature of the water. So the mass that we should use here should be the mass of the water. So whatever you're measuring the temperature of is what you should be using the mass of, and it's what you should be using the specific heat of. Because a lot of times you might be given a table with a bunch of values and you might need to choose which specific heat to use. So base everything off of what are you measuring the temperature of? And then the mass and specific heat should match whatever you're measuring the temperature of. Okay, so we want to use the mass of our water, which is 78.5 grams. Specific heat, it's not on this page right here in front of you, but you would have a table like it's in your homework. Um, the specific heat of water is 4.2 joules per gram degree Celsius. No, you don't need to memorize that. You'd be given it in a table somewhere. And the temperature change of the water is, let's calculate that over here, delta T is 43.2 minus 20.5. So it's the final temperature um, minus the initial temperature. So I'll plug that in my calculator. And I get 22.7 degrees. So this is 22.7 degrees Celsius. So I multiply all that together, I'm going to get my Q value. So I'm going to 22.7 times 4.2 times 78.5. Plug that all in, I get 7,484 joules. And if I wanted to, I could convert that into kilojoules by dividing by 1,000. It all depends on what the problem asks for me to do. Okay. There we go. Um, one other type of scenario for this is finding something other than Q. So this question, so here's our equation, Q equals M times C times delta T. And so far the last couple of scenarios we were solving for Q, which is energy, but a question might ask you to solve for something else. Like this question actually says, what is the specific heat? So it's actually asking you to solve for C and it gives you a mass and an energy and a temperature change. So I'm going to follow the same kind of method. I'm going to look at my equation and look through the problem and say, what do I know? And start plugging numbers in. So I know a mass. It only gives me one mass. So that makes it easier. I know I'm using the right mass here. Okay. I don't know C. So I'm going to leave that blank. Um, I know the temperature change is 27.1 degrees Celsius. And I know my energy is 100 joules. So I know I have four variables. <clears throat> I know three of them. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to rearrange it and try and solve for C. So right now C is being multiplied by 4 and 27. And I want to change this equation into so it looks like this. C equals something. I want to get C by itself. So to do that, I want to get rid of the 4 and the 27. You might remember from algebra, the rule is... If you want to get rid of something, you, you do the opposite. So if I'm multiplying by 27, I want to divide by 27 in order to eliminate that. And I have to do the same thing to both sides. So I have to divide both sides by 27 um, and 4. So I end up with C equals 100 divided by 4 times 27.1. So I'm going to write this again neatly over here. I'm going to plug this in my calculator. 100 divided by 4 divided by 27.1 gives me a specific heat of 0 0.92. I'll just round that to um, two decimal places. So that would be my specific heat. So you can use this equation to solve for Q or for mass or for specific heat or for temperature change, depending on what you are given. Okay, so those are some examples of how you would calculate heat and use this heat equation. If you have questions on this still, please let me know. And you could either, you know, stop by tutorial or 